Hey guys, Mike here, Damage Tutorials, and welcome back to a new video. All right, well, today we're going to do a request that I received from John. And uh, John, I'd like to thank you for supporting my channel. Uh, you're a loyal fan, though, so thanks for that. And uh, the question that I received was, can you demonstrate how to create sun rays or sunbeams coming into a room? Okay, so that's what we're going to do. All right. So I set up a basic scene here. It's just a room with a window and I textured the back wall and the side wall. I textured the floor and the ceiling. Not that wall because it's not going to be receiving any light. And as you can see, there are no lights whatsoever going on in the scene. Okay. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to make sure that we have this model to skill. Now, why is that important? Well, in Maya, uh, light contains real world information, okay? So if you are modeling a room that is one by one inch, for example, and you place a light source into that room, which uh, corresponds with, uh, let's say, a 100 watt light bulb, for example, then that will be completely blown out. Now, you don't want that, obviously, so make sure your uh, room is modeled to scale. Now, one way to check that is go to your front view and we're going to go up to create measure tool and distance tool. We're going to left click on our grid and then we're going to hold down our left key and pull up. Now you can see my room is about 218 centimeters. Okay, so that should be good. So I'm going to hit control Z to get rid of that. And before we do anything else, we're going to go into our render, render settings. Sorry. And there we go. And we're gonna go through our tabs here. Now in my common tab, I have um, the size for my image set to HD 540 because I'm gonna do a couple of render shots and it's gonna take too long if I make it very large, but you could use, let's say HD 1080, for example, okay? So that's all good. Then one other thing we need to consider is if you go way down to render options, here you have the enable default light. Now, for now, we're going to turn that off. And then we're going to move to our quality tab. Make sure that if we, uh, let's see what we've got. Um, make sure I'm in the right tab here. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to close that out. I'm going to show the advanced settings. Uh, let's see. What do we need to tweak here? Not too much. No. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that the lighting quality is at about 1.7, but besides that, we should be good, okay? Then, in our scene, we're not gonna do much here. No, not here and not here, fine. And make sure you are in Maya software, okay? All right, so let's set up our initial light. Now, to create uh, sunbeams or light fog or volumetric uh, lighting, uh, whatever you wanna call it, you need to use a spotlight, okay? So we're gonna go to create lights and spotlight, and that's the only light you can use for this. We're gonna hit W, it's been created down here. I'm just gonna hit R and scale it up so I can see where it's at. It's not gonna increase the intensity or anything. And then I'm gonna hit W and I'm gonna pull that out. I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard, which will allow me to grab this control here so I can kind of aim my light. And as I want to see what my light is doing in my scene, I'm going to hit 7 on my keyboard, which will kind of see where my light is projecting, okay? So just by moving that, I'm getting better into where I need to be. We'll just place this roughly in the middle of the room. And for the purpose of uh, my light fog, I want to extend this guy. So I'm going to hit R to scale it. And I'm going to start to push that thing straight through. And why straight through? The fog or the light ends where this big circle is at. So if I were to do this, the light would kind of stop midway of my room, okay? So make sure that's going through there. Now the next thing is, make sure that these lines here are not cutting through your room, okay? So here we have a little issue right there. We don't really want that. So let's see if we can fix that. We'll do that with our angle. Make sure that's all the way through. 
Then in our attribute editor, we're going to go into our spotlight shape one. And let's scroll up here. And we're going to go with our cone angle. Okay. So let's tweak that a bit. And kind of just make that big enough. So all the light coming in the room is coming through that window. And that's how it should be. Okay. All right, now we got that. Now that is probably not enough light for our scene in general. Now I set up a bookmark, so I'm gonna to go to view and bookmark and new. And uh, we didn't set up any fog yet. We're just gonna simply hit render and see what we get. Okay, see you in a sec. All right, so we got some lighting going on there. Uh, not too interesting, uh, but that's an initial start. So one thing that we already see is although we have uh, dividers in our window, we're not seeing that in our um, shades or shadows, okay? So we're going to minimize that. We're going to go into our spotlight shape and we're going to scroll down. First, we've got intensity. We're going to leave that. Cone angle, we just uh, tweak that. The penumbra angle, we can tweak that as well. Uh, not quite yet. We'll maybe tweak that later once we have something to look at. Here's where we're going to plug in our fog. But for now, I'm going to go down to shadows. Okay. Now, in shadows, you have the option to use depth map shadows or ray trace shadows. And these are selected by default. So we're going to turn this off. We're going to go back up and we're going to use depth map shadows. And I'll set the resolution to 1024. Okay. We're going to go back to our bookmark. And we're going to re-render quickly. Let's save this for comparison. And hit render. All right. And already you can see that we now have the shape of our window. And we can see the dividers. And that is because we are now using depth map shadows. Okay. Quite dark in our scene. So we're going to save this guy we're going to minimize that and we're going to place one additional light okay so we're going to go up to create lights and area light right there we're going to hit w pull that out hit r to scale it up a bit hit t to create a control so we can kind of move it and point that towards kind of the middle of the room there and then we'll raise this guy up a little bit and that will give us some additional light, okay? Now, we don't want that to be too intense, so let's bring that down to 0 0.35, okay? We're going to quickly go back to view, bookmark, and new, and let's hit render once again. So this guy has been saved out. We're going to render again. Okay, so now if we compare this to the last one, big difference. So this is... Okay, maybe our area light is a bit too bright still. So let's save that. We're going to go into our area light and let's bring the intensity down to 0 0.25, which is okay. And then next what we're going to do is we're going to plug in a, a fog node into our spotlight. So we're going to select our spotlight and we're going to start to scroll down from the top. And here you have light fog. We're going to hit our checkered box here. Okay, which creates uh, this uh, stuff right here. And then we have a couple of options. We can increase the density of our fog. Let's do 1.5 to start with. Okay, let's scroll down. Let's see what else we've got going on here. Not too much as of yet. We're going to go back to window outliner and spotlight. Here we go. So we have that light fog set up, light fog three, as you can see here, the fog spread, we can adjust that and the fog intensity. Now I want it to be fairly intense. So let's do two on that. And the fog spread, we'll do two as well. Now the fog spread is the intensity of the fog as the light comes into the window that will decay as it moves through the room. But I want to have a kind of thick light beam. So that's why I'm setting the spread to two. Okay. We're going to scroll down further. And let's see if there's anything else we need to tweak. These are our depth map shadows. That's good. All good. Okay. Fog shadows intensity. I'm going to increase that to two. 
and the sampling to avoid noise, if you will, in our light beam, I'm going to increase that to about 35. Okay. We're going to go back to view, bookmark, and new. And I'm just going to close this stuff out for a sec. And let's hit render once again. This will probably take a bit longer. Okay, here you can very clearly see our light beam, which is uh, kind of cool, I think. We can still tweak it a little. So what we'll do is we'll save that once again for comparison. We'll zoom out. We'll take our area light and let's bring that intensity down even further. Let's do 0 0.15. Then we'll take our spotlight. Actually, let's take our, uh, yeah, spotlight one. We're going to go down. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? So much stuff going on here. Okay, that's just the intensity of our light in general. That's one. That's good. The cone angle, that's good, that's good. Um, let's see. We'll increase the intensity of our fog to, let's do four. And then we are going to go to our cone shape. And I kind of want to tweak that a little bit. I guess that's... Yeah, I don't want any light projected on the ceiling here, but this will get a better view of our window in the room. So I'm just kind of playing with that a little bit. We're going to hit E and we're going to rotate it just a little with my main focus on the table here. That should be good. Okay, so we're going to go back to view, bookmark, new, and let's give this another go. Save that for comparison. Okay, and it looks like um, by doing that, you see this line going on there, okay? That is actually my fog, which is not good. So what we're gonna do there is, that's this guy here. Let's just hit Control Z to go back. That's better, okay. So this right here is what we need to deal with, okay. And let's just see if I can quickly find that. Just give me one sec. <clears throat> right, guys. Well, as you can see, this is the cone angle for our spotlight. This beam right here to the right, that is kind of the... Um, how the fog is spread out in the room, okay? So by playing with the cone angle, I increase or decrease that. The reason we just had this really thin line was because of the angle of my cone. So I'm just gonna increase that, maybe even a bit more than that. Let's do something like so. And we're gonna go back to view, bookmark and new, and let's give this another go, all right? And actually, let's see if we can improve this a little by and this is just a test guys, so don't you know don't be mad if this doesn't work. Hang on. We'll just do that's what I was going for. That's my test there. Yeah, nice. All right. Okay, so this is what I was going for. Uh, as you can see, it, it's pretty intense, and I did that on purpose, but uh, purely to demonstrate, you know, what that would look like. Now, ideally speaking, uh, the light is coming in from a kind of a low angle, and I really want to tweak that, so I'm just going to minimize that. And by now, what we can do is we can hit W, we can pull it up, and then we can hit E and kind of rotate that down and kind of aim that fog and light and that angle, okay? So Windows bookmark new. This should be my final render. So I'm gonna go to render settings and I'm just gonna increase the quality for a sec here, okay? So we're gonna go to HD 1080 and uh, that's all good. Yep, fine. Should take a bit longer. So I'll just uh, hit render, pause the video. See you guys in a sec.
Right guys, well this is our final render. Um, yeah, I could tweak it a bit more to get the, the sun angle just right to hit the tabletop and a wall and so forth. But you know, the tutorial is about the sunbeams and not the position of the table, right? So yeah, this is uh, pretty much how that works. Uh, hopefully you guys will have fun with this. Uh, I had, so uh, hopefully you will too. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll help you if I can. And that said, thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.